So how I met the curators, actually, this is an interesting story because we have met through Design Mina. I know Islam already from a long time, but uh, uh, Islam won the Young Architect Award in 2015 and Cristiano was one of the jury. And 2016, I won the Young Architect Award as well. So this is how we met through the uh, Design Mina. And it was interesting to come back again in 2018 and uh, do the pavilion together at Tiano. We discussed the several ideas uh, and we found that uh, Rubabikia would be one of the most interesting uh, uh, ideas to present to the Egyptian pavilion in the Binali. Uh, actually, we were, we were inspired with, uh, with the Curator's Manifesto, uh, which is the free space for opportunity, free space of thinking, free space of imagination. And we wanted to um, uh, take part from Egypt, which is actually the, the installation, and present it there. In, uh, so it's like we draw a lens uh, uh, from Venice back to Egypt to highlight all this uh, informal markets in Egypt. Uh, and that was Rubabikia, uh, where we choose the potential projects in Egypt. We have inside the, the pavilion a huge map, which is almost 20 meter, highlighting all these uh, places in, in, uh, in Cairo and in all other, other places in Egypt. Uh, more about the concept, actually, our main focus was more about the informality. Uh, we believe that it's something we should really explore it more and more. Uh, and uh, we should also learn from it because uh, what's happening that uh, there is a culture and there is there is people living in these areas and we cannot just come and uh, you know move them or change totally the rules of this space. So we believe that any new regulation, any anything that need to be applied on that in, in this informal markets, uh, we need to first see how these people are living, how these people are trading together, and this is what we did actually through our research and also through our contributors. Uh, because we made an open call and, uh, for, uh, for, for uh, contributors and we really selected a lot of interesting topics which is already presented in our book, we call it Rubabikia, the informal city and it's presented there in the pavilion and we have also the link online. Uh, uh, and then we, we decided to go in one of the markets which is Souq al -Juma. It's one of the uh, potential projects that even myself uh, would like to do uh, a proposal for this place one day. Uh, uh, we bought uh, approximately 400 pieces, Rubabikia piece from there. It's uh, Rubabikia actually, it's, uh, it's coming from, it, it's an, an Italian word which means, uh, which may, uh, named uh, Rubabikia. Uh, and in Egypt we, we changed it to Rubabikia because in Egypt they don't pronounce the V, so they call it Rubabikia. And then it became Bikia Bikia. So we have the street vendors uh, moving everywhere in the, in the Egypt, uh, Egypt uh, streets. They call Bikia, and then they get this stuff, and then they sell it back. So we believe that there is a history behind each object there. And the way we put the installation and the place this uh, curve, which we have there in the pavilion, I think it's telling a lot of stories. There. Um, for, for us, even the, the three days or four days we spent in the market there selecting this object, it means a lot for us. Uh, we have a lot of connections with the street uh, vendors, with the, even with the sellers there. What we wanted to do actually is to highlight uh, uh, these places in Egypt and uh, we found that the Binali is the best place or the best uh, stage where we can really highlight this issue. One of the issues is Souq al Juma, which is the project that we highlighted. Uh, it's in between cemetery in Egypt, so people live there. People, uh, so we believe that there is no more free space in Egypt because they, they occupied all the space. Yeah. That's, that's I think the major issue that we are facing there. That's why everywhere it's crowded and uh, moving them and taking them out of the city, we don't believe that this is the solution because they will keep repeating this everywhere again. And then once the city is growing, that will, again, they will keep moving. Uh, so it's, uh, we believe that there is a better solution. Um, uh, there is a way that, a uh, better solution that we can really um, uh, do more research about it. Uh, we have to include them, we have to talk to them. We need to know what's the needs. Uh, after this, we can start to do the architecture side. The pavilion, which is one of the interesting part for all of us, I think. If you ask any one of the creators, Islam or Christian or myself, it was really interesting because uh, it came now the real part. We have everything on the drawings. We spent a lot of time really preparing all the fabrication for the drawings. We have like almost 50 sheets of the drawings. And uh, when we went there, we decided to work by our hand. Uh, we have our, our friends there from uh, the, the contractor side who is helping them. The challenge that we found in the construction there that we have to hang uh, uh, over 400 pieces from on the ceiling. And uh, as per our design or the selection that we, we brought from Egypt, it's somehow a parametric shape where we need to bring the bigger piece, pieces in the middle and then it goes uh, 
So somehow there is kind of order in this, in this installation. Uh, when you look at the installation and you look at the objects, it's exactly as we bought it from Egypt. Even we decided to keep it as it is. We didn't clean it because we, we, it's part of the part of the market. But the way it was uh, designed and the way it was placed in the in the pavilion, it's, uh, it's showing somehow order, which means that we can, with some a little ideas and and with with, with maybe some tweaks, and we can really come up with with good ideas. And that was. Uh, I remember after, after the opening day, I was just standing beside the door waiting for the people to come there and just capture the first uh, reaction. And the first reaction was always like, wow, they look at the ceiling and say, wow.